Here we go. We'll start with the black and whites. You can see it cut off a little bit before doing the final, so I just sketched it in kind of brief, the, the sort of vague shapes that you'll need um, to sketch this guy out. If anybody has any pictures of any animals you want me to do, you should send them in because that's what we're doing this, uh, that's what we're doing this summer. And I'm uh, sorry, that's what we're doing animals this summer and then we'll move to another subject after that. I, I'm um, doing the person I started with. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Diana, you want to just give everybody a few words on how you survived, how you survived your gala? Because people will want to know. <laughs> I'm here. She's here. I'm here. <laughs> no, it was good, actually. It was really good. And it was a big success. It really was. Yeah. Uh, you guys, I Diana had me copy edit the program. Yeah, you're in the program. You're That's in it. credit. Thank you. I saw that. But what I wanted to say about it is how incredibly impressive this event is. She, Diana picks a lot of, it. Diana had like eight award winners who were all more, one more compelling than the next. There was a Fox News broadcaster who helps children get adopted. There was a, a photographer who got the Daniel Pearl Award. Remember the guy who was beheaded? Um, there was uh, a comedian who runs mm -hmm. a comedy club who was one of the first people to like pay comedians in the LA. And, and there was this uh, lawyer who totally gets off on, you know, taking down, um, you know, protecting journalists who was a journalist who protects journalists. It, they, it was this, I just kept reading and going, oh my God, like it just kept going on. That's just it. That's not even it. There were a lot of really compelling people. I felt like I learned so much, <clears throat> not just about what your organization does, Diana, which is quite a lot, but also why these galas are important beyond the fundraising, why they're important. They kind of keep everybody's spirits up. Yep. Right? Yep. It was really good. Hi, Sandra. So anyway, I oh, was yeah. Hi, guys. impressed, super impressed. All right. Thank so, you. Thank you. It, it was really impressive, Diana. It inspired me. I'm getting ready to start my own fundraiser, raiser, my first gala for my um, nonprofit. And now have an executive director so we can do that. And I took a lot of lessons from editing your book. I thought about. And you know, the, it, it takes a while till you have enough money. But I mean, at this award show, we gave out $30,000 to. That's so neat young journalist award, yeah oh yeah the young journal that's right there were scholarship winners they were like and they all had this kind of compelling story with some tragedy and some um redemption it was just really exciting honestly i would suggest you read it just to know who all these people are it was really impressive yeah, all right enough I'm about that on the web yeah it's enough all on the recording but like but it should be on the recording okay so as i'm looking at this as usual, I'm going to find the halfway point. Can you guys figure out just by holding up your pen, pencil or pen, standing back, figuring out how big, where the halfway point is? From the top to the bottom of this orange line. Where do you think it is? Do your measurements and then I'll, we'll test it. I'd say like, honestly, belly. Yeah. yeah. What's like that? Stomach. Kind like of around here. Stomach. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think about here too. Good job. One. Oh, nope. Up higher. A little bit higher. Yeah. Like yeah, more higher. Like, like there. One, two. More stomach than liver. Yeah. But if he had a belly button, which maybe he does and we just yeah. can't see it because of the fur. Right here. Exactly. Excellent. And then again, my quarter point oh, looks like. One. His little ears. I'm in love with this little guy. Yeah, that's about right. So what's nice is the quarter point comes right where his the, the bottom of his mouth is. And mm -hmm. the other quarter point, we can see kind of where his I like this measurement because it shows you can see that his 
little body kind of ends here in this second quarter point and that his little leg goes back like this, right? For the third. So before we get too much into it, let's put our, let's lay down our line. Remember this line can be as big or as small as you want it to be. It does not matter. I'm gonna center mine and make it this big, right? Is this the same size as I think it's a little smaller actually. Yeah, and then I'll find my halfway point just by, and you can do the same one. Yeah, I think that's about right. And then my corporate. So this is what I kind of want to, because I still have students say things to me like, well, if you're using a paper, you're doing a one-to-one -one transmission, right? And I'm just copying this exactly the same size. That's not actually what's happening here. Um, what I'm giving you are the tools to be able to make this larger or smaller as you wish. Oops. Right, because as long as proportionally it's the same, it doesn't matter how big each of these is, as long as proportionally things are the same. Like and then at the halfway point, we'll draw our little box. And I'm going to draw this line. So we're kind of doing this thing where we're getting the kind of outside edge of the fellow. There's actually a little tail, I think. Yep. Or I don't really know what that is. I think this is part of his wing here. It comes off this direction. But we're essentially kind of boxing off how far from the ears to the wings, right, the body goes. And that helps us kind of place things in the right direction. And it also shows us kind of how wide. So I know this comes out a little wider than his body, but if you line that up with his ear and his wing on this side, this is the widest part of the body. So that's what I'm doing there. Um, and this, can anybody tell me how wide this is compared to how tall it is? I'm gonna stand back and check it myself. Anybody have any thoughts? How wide is this? Isn't it kind of like the quarter point or? No, try it again. I'm try not again. sure if, if, if I'm right, but okay, it feels, yeah. feels like exactly like half the way point. Or yeah, yeah, it's bitch one and a half quarters. If you look here, you'll see one and a half quarters. See that? A little bit higher than one and a half quarters. Can you guys see that? You're hoping, Annika, that it's the hat, that it's the quarter point, because that would make it easy, but it yeah. is not. <laughs> it's but not. I don't get it, actually. Well, look. Yeah, I am. Check your measurement. Yeah. Here's the quarter point. Here's the second quarter point. We do it. We, uh, the reason I'm, I'm kind of saying this surprise is that we've done this many, many times. So you should get it. Mm. Or you're just not seeing it. See? One, here's the disc, here's the width. Mm -hmm. When I compare it to the height, there's the height. It comes up to about here. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So this is something we practice a lot. Right? And I want you guys to get better. I've been doing this measurement for you. I want you to get better at doing it by eyeballing it because that's really how you get, to, that's the next level of drawing, right? Is to be able to stand. Here, like I'm doing here, I'll pop myself up so you can see what I'm doing. Have spotlight. Stand here with my arms straight, holding out. You'll be holding it up to your computer screen. I'm holding it up to my thing. I'm keeping my arms straight, and then I'm checking the measurement. Right. The other thing you can't do when you're um, when you're not working on a two days, when you're working on a three D service, of course, is you can't mark the subject when you're like you can't remember your marks. So this is another crutch, but we'll keep it for now. It's easier to show. Anyway, that's the idea. You're gonna kind of keep going back 
right? And checking all the time. That's kind of what you end up doing when you don't, when you're working from a 3D subject, you're like, huh. And you guys have a little bit of the opportunity to do that, particularly if you don't print this out, because then you have to look at the computer screen, the way I've got it you know, conveyed here. And that's how you do check your measurements. Um, you can also step back farther away, right? You can step back far so that it's easier. And you'll see that gets a little bit easier because you can see it better. Um, so our width is about here. I come over here so I can mark it there and then measure it here. And by the way, Sandra, nice to see you. Yeah, it's very nice to see you. I'm sorry I woke up so late. It's okay. I, I actually subject. am in big, you know, I slept my entire vacation and now I'm in big support of people sleeping as much as they possibly can. Oh, hi, Emma. Nice to see you. I'm like, please sleep. <laughs> I think for the last two or three years, I kind of automatically wake up at 5.30 and I normally, I would just get up, stumble and start working. And now I'm just like, after having a vacation for a week and sleeping a lot, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I feel like I'm recovering from an illness. I wake up in the middle of the night and then fall back asleep. Yeah. But yeah, as somebody was, you have, do you have big trees where you are, where you live? Yeah, yeah, the tons. Do you, do you have covers on your gutters? I do not have covers on my gutters, but I probably should. My gutters are a mess. Oh. Yeah. Do you, are you putting covers on your Well, gutters? I don't, but I need to change my gutters. And the guy said, you should put covers. But every time I read about them, they say they're more for pain than anything else. But, you know, so I don't well, know. Well, I bet you they would block off all the, I mean, if I showed you but, pictures of my gutters right now, you'd be horrified. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, I think they block up some leaves, but they also get blocked and then it's hard to clean them because you need to unscrew the thing. Right. All right. So a couple of things. Uh, we can see that this part of his leg here is upside down. Sorry, you're going to hear that all the time. But Sandra, now. you can have the loose ones. They have them. Don't buy the expensive, you know, installation shit. You, they have the loose ones at home deep one. Yeah, but then when are, it's windy, they fly off. They don't. Oh. They don't. Can you send me the name, please? Uh, I don't know the name, but I have them. Or could you? And I live in a windy place. A super windy place. Are they made of metal? Yeah. Oh. And you, you don't have a photo because you'd have to climb on the roof, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'd like to see. <laughs> we don't because Diana doesn't like to climb on ladders. So <laughs> no, I'm done with that. <laughs> <laughs> my gym teacher, I have like in my current gym class, I have several. My gym teacher and also several of her students have broken their backs. Almost all of them at some point in their life, almost all of them by climbing up ladders. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, here we go, you guys. What I did. That's what I did. But I broke my neck. Your oh, neck. that's right. You broke it was you on a fucking ladder, wasn't it? Yeah. Down. yeah. Ladders are dangerous. Um, so go ahead and send me your measurements, you guys. And I'll, and I'll sort of point out a few key points. So Right under the quarter point here is kind of where his little leg is. And there's, of course, this little edge right here. Right, there's like this thing that's happening. Oh, his little ears. Right. And then I know you can't really see his feet, so I'm just giving you the basics so you can block them out. We'll look at that later. Honey, let's see. Yep, looks good to me. Looks good to me, Honey. So yeah, go ahead and go in and start sketching.
I'm using this. I'm using these marks also to help me figure out where things go to, right? So like here, for example, I can see that like uh, almost halfway down this first quarter is where his wing kind of takes up so I can get that, that long, narrow triangle of negative space here. Quite center. In this particular case, these two sides are the same. So I had mine not quite center, which was causing problems. See how I'm kind of adjusting my box. It's easy, even when you get your grid in place, it's easy to kind of drift off the lines and you lose it. Whatever you have, you kind of lost. But look at, here's where my box originally was. It's really over here. So anyway, just be aware that's a thing. It happens. It happens to the best of us happens to your teacher and she doesn't freak out about it. <laughs> she just keeps on correcting. I was thinking about how much correcting, oops, no. I was thinking about how much more, how, how, how correcting has really become such a part of my process. I don't even think about it anymore. It's just, you lay the lines down, then you check them out to see, do they work? Um, I had one student once who really wanted everything to be perfect on the first go. He would come up with these crazy calculations, which of course made no sense at all because he was working, he was thinking about a 3D object and not you know, translating three dimensions to two. And uh, poor Jay, he really struggled with that idea because he didn't want to lay a line down that was wrong. And I'm like, ha oh, ha, welcome to the world of drawing where every line you lay down is wrong. <laughs> That's just how it works. Um, notice this mistake I just made. I made my leg too long back here. It really, really kind of lines up with the quarter point and just goes a little bit further. I had my way too far. And then my suggestion is just to box off these little feet until we can look at this in color. So there you go. That's how, I think that's about right. I mean, I don't know. We'll check it as we go. Sometimes like the mistakes happen when you're like, focusing so much on all the pieces and what you're drawing that you're struggling. <clears throat> you think of them too much in pieces and not as sort of bigger shapes. That's sometimes what happens. Yes. By the way, I hope some of you are gonna join us for print making from home tomorrow. It's gonna be awesome. Oh, it's tomorrow? It's tomorrow, it starts tomorrow. 
Is it the, the 8 a.m. class? Uh, 9 a.m. class. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not tomorrow. It's Sunday. I'm an idiot. Tomorrow is the normal 8 a.m. class, beginning drawing. Thank you, Diana. Thanks for bringing me back to reality. I hope you will join us on Sunday for, uh, for the printmaking class. Oish. Go. Yes. Yeah, I've ordered materials. Um, I just, I think you'll learn so much from my friend Lotto. You're gonna learn a lot from him. He's really, he's, he's really, a, he taught me a lot and I'm just happy that you'll be able to get some time with him too. He's really special. He's a special guy. Yes, I think it's a privilege to be taught by the guy who taught you. Yeah, it's not right. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think it's great too. And he's honestly, he's quite excited. So he really, he's like, how many people are going to come? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I never, I never know. I never know. Uh, um, but yeah, he's one, he is a seminal force in my life. He's the first, like I say, he was one of the first people who was like, oh yeah, you're good. You, you can do this. You can do I liked it. him. I liked when we talked. And yeah, yeah. And he has a tremendous amount of art history information, which he just, he'll just, you'll learn a lot just by listening to him. He, he has a real sound knowledge of art history. Every artist. He reads and he books. said uh, some of his stuff is in museums. Yeah, some of his stuff is in museums. He's collected in museums. He's just published a book in Georgian, on uh, Georgian history. Um, which won a literary award in Germany of all places. I think we win. Um, uh, he, yeah, <laughs> I remember we met when I was living, when we were both living in Budapest, I don't know, 2006 to 2008. And I remember we had another American friend who was an artist and he was constantly talking about like all these artists that he knew. And he said something once and she said, how do you know all that information? You know, this classic American artist who doesn't really read very much. <laughs> and like, and he said, I read it in books. And she went, what books? <laughs> it's like, it's like, uh, God, I, we all just looked at her like, what? <laughs> Sadly, there's a certain kind of American artist who doesn't think you should read. <laughs> Or at least who doesn't bother. Right. And so Lotto, here's Lotto. He, a little bit about his history. He escaped from the Russians in 1990 when they bombed his home and took over his home in, in uh, Abkhazia, in, um, in a part of Georgia near the Black Sea. Oh, he's Georgian, is he? He's Georgian. He's from the Republic of uh -huh. Georgia. And he uh -huh. had to run for his life and lose everything. He and his mother, when he was 18, he got on a ship and watched his whole city just getting, you know, basically what's happening in Ukraine right now happened to him. And, uh, and then he had to live as a refugee in a one room apartment, you know, in Tbilisi for seven years. And when he and his wife, his American wife, fi he finally got to like an American university. He was like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen, right? You can go to the library at the University of Cincinnati or wherever it was, University of Michigan, and it's massive. There's so much here that he didn't have access to. So imagine wow. some dumb, American artist going, what books did you read? And he's like, there are so many books here. <laughs> I have no idea how many books there are here. What is wrong with you? <laughs> That's right up there with the art, an American artist who once said to me, why do you have a library card? <laughs> I'm dead serious. Why do you have a library card? Talking of which, um throwing many books away, not throwing, I'm going to donate them. Good, to the library, I hope. Yeah, yes, hopefully to the library. Yeah. Hopefully the library wants them, if not the charity, because yeah. I'm running out of space and I reckon I'm not going to read the paperbacks again. Anyway, I'm not going to diss Americans anymore. It's way too low hanging <laughs> fruit. <laughs> it's pretty easy to like tear apart the American way right now. I'm not going to do that anymore. That We've already done it ourselves. <laughs> But it is, it's just to tell you a little bit about Lotto and what you'll get out of learning. 
uh, out of uh, learning from him. Here, here's a slightly more adjusted. So let's see your guys' pieces before we get in any further. Leah, could you share maybe this uh, picture with, uh, of the- Oh, this? Of the flying beast <laughs> with yes, the yellow with line. The, with the yellow lines, I'm doing it right now. My brain is not working perfectly today. I got I'm you, I understand. Losing orientation, thank you. I'm so glad we're doing um, one of these because it's in my list of animals to do and I, I had uh, collected know, I quite a few pictures. I think this is one that you sent me, Sandra, because I did oh, a good. bunch of printouts and I was like, they They're called the flying foxes. They're oh. darling. I mean, they I'm live in Australia. Oh, I, I have to send you a picture. That will you will absolutely love all them. You go ahead. And I'll I'll send it when I find it. Okay. And everybody, please send in pictures of things you want to paint. That's what I would say. Please send in the pictures of the things you want to paint, and we will paint them because we should paint what you want to paint. You all know enough. Give me things. I mean, I can also pick it. I'm happy to do that. But if you have ideas of things you like, pets, you know, all of it, send it in. Um, we should do what we want to do. Uh, tomorrow, so tomorrow for, uh, for drawing fundamentals, we're going to start working with ink. If anybody has interest, we'll start with the ink. We'll be working with animals as well. So if you have interest in working in ink, you should jump into that class. And then, yes, yeah, Sunday, we've got printmaking from home and also, um, uh, and then also my usual Sunday acrylic oil watercolor painting studio. We're going to actually start a new painting um, from building, it's a building, so we're kind of working back towards cityscapes. Anyway, I have plans, we have plans. <laughs> yeah, I'm sending you three because I can't resist. Okay. But basically, these guys occasionally get orphaned. Oh! And they get rescued, and they, they are swaddled like this. Oh, for God's sakes. Aren't they cute? <laughs> Oh. Oh. Oh, baby. I have to unmute so you can hear my oh, oh geez. <laughs> oh my god, they're ridiculous. <laughs> oh Maybe we ought to do one of those too. <laughs> they're really stinking cute. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. We we found one on our on our veranda the other day. He was hurt, right. or I don't know, a little bad, and we took him up and put him in a tree, and then he took off. So hopefully, oh hopefully. good, they're very the wings are very fragile. Yeah, they're so small. These guys are huge. The flying foxes. Oh, really? Yeah, I when I had a summer house up north in Sweden, we had this bat family that lived in the barn and the little babies when they started flying they got lost and so once in a while they ended up in our house <laughs> and and you know they they look for things to huddle in so i oh. i would one day Jesus. I found one in my sneaker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they like to be swaddled. Thank God yeah. they found oh. a nice house. Because I, ha I, have, I have a picture oh, somewhere. Nice. I took a bunch of pictures of that. Okay, How come we can't so see you, Annika, I, I don't, Annika, I don't think you have this. Uh, let me see. Can, I can't see your whole, it's, I can't see your whole drawing, Annika. Oh. The foot is cut off. Can you oh, see that over? Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was confused for a second. I'm like, oh no, but it actually it looks okay. I just want to. And your ear is definitely too small here. Yours yeah. is about half the size, right? Look, it's about here. Oh, right, right, right. You have that happening. So really pay attention to this, this outer, this negative space shape. That's going to help you. Oh, that's coming. Oh, I see, Diana. Diana. She doesn't look like a, 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 a ghost anymore. But she yeah. looks like herself. I know. Yeah, she looks like her. Oh, cool. Oh, you know who it is? Yeah. Who is Tell it? Me. 
I don't remember. I, I think I know it. I don't know her name, but I met her at the press club, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She's the, the one. Press she press. had um, she had something. We were talking about some something that she had a couple of years ago when she was sick or something. But I don't remember. Yeah, I, I do. I'm certain I recognize. It looks exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Her name is Gail. Yeah, Gail. that's right. Yeah, yeah, she's very nice. She looks like you, Diana. <laughs> You should have seen you. how she looked like yesterday morning. <laughs> oh, looked like really, not Diana, I meant her. Yeah, the painting. painting. I she know. I, like a I, zombie, didn't, like, I didn't take a picture of that. Like for living it was too. But you sent it over on Tuesday, so we saw No, I Sandra didn't. Did I didn't. I asked held it up. Sandra did her job well. She had one job. I think, that was to get Diana painting again. Well, Very actually, good, Diana painted fight me. But you're you're integral in that process. <laughs> so yeah, Diana, how come we can't see you? You can see her. I can see her. No, I can't no. see her. Oh, it's uh, frozen. It's all black. Yeah, it's, it's not frozen. black for me. No, I see that. Frozen. I see her, but she's frozen. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, oh. skip off and then on again. That's there. what happened. There she is. Ah, oh, good. By the way, it's <laughs> nice to moving. see. Okay. So let's see. One, I'm going to go into three, four. One, two, three. I'm just checking. Oh, you're cheating the devil. <laughs> the printing devil is going to cut off your ears. But yeah, it did. Like... It did in the black and white on the, in the, the, the printing um, devil. Color one, it's okay. I think the foot is a little bit bigger. I mean, uh, Annika, yeah. Yeah. And notice okay. this kind of curves in just a little bit. Otherwise, it's looking pretty good to me. Um, I and have my also cat here helping me too. Make your ear. This needs to cut it. So right now you've done this. I'm going to mm -hmm. show you here. You've done okay. this. See that? Yeah. That's what you've done. So pay more attention to the re, re really pay attention to this shape. Okay. That's that's it's easy to make things too big or too small if we don't think they're important. It's important. It's that darn left brain. Let's see. So Anika gonna let's see. Ring, see this line? You've got yours more out like this. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, Anik, I, I was saying, I'm oh, oh. sorry, Anik as well. <clears throat> so thin out a little bit here. And his nose Leo. is a little bit bigger than that. He kind of jumped ahead. Yes. I'm trying to catch up really quickly, and I'm a bit delayed. I mean, late. Yeah. Is the width? To the width like is two and a half not, times. No, nah, two and a half a, times for length, right? It's a no. Uh, the width is about a little. Whoops. The width is two, about two and a third. One, uh, one and one and uh, two thirds. I would say. See that? It's about. This is the mark for the. Width. I meant rather the length. The length vis-a-vis -vis the width. Is the length is to i it's a hard that's a hard one to i'd rather you translate it this way so the width is about is a little bit less than one half of the length about this much less than one half oh, so you just leave it like that you don't say like it's two and a half times or two well, and one that's third. a hard math to do right it, it's easy to bung it up i'm looking for the easiest way to like get my math to work so if this isn't an obvious like uh one court one if this isn't like one half and one half then i'm gonna i use the what i use is the is the first measurements i define which are these quarter points and this halfway point on the vertical that's what I refer to because these I know are right solid. So I use them as the base. I have okay. to check on the ducks. There's a hawk uh, circling. Okay. Oh, and I'm going to get my print. All right. Okay. All right. Um, 
Everybody just send yours in. I can see some people are moving on. So get to some guides. I'm very proud of you guys for not jumping right in and trying to do those eyes first. It's so tempting, but it's so not helpful, right? Start with the shapes, the outer shapes. I want to start with the shape of the face first. Let's see. There you go, Oni. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Always be paying attention, right, to your negative spaces. Oh, hello, kitties. He's Wait. helping me look out for the hawk. <laughs> I see him. <laughs> he's on He's on uh, the prowl. Good kitty. Yeah. He, he still doesn't go out. Though. He's turned into an indoor cat. Just wow. I think that's probably, probably just, better. I do think so, too. It, it, <laughs> I think that's better. But it's how, do you, funny, how do you like your new place, Annika? Oh, I love it. But it is, I mean, it is, we have this hawk that's been eyeing the ducks, but the ducks are very big, but so we put up a camouflage net so he won't have a swoop area because hawks can't land and then take someone in their claws yeah. and then get up. They have they to- They are clever little, they're clever beasts. Yeah. Wow. We've, we've, um, we can't cover the whole area, but we can take off his, any possibility he would have a sweeping in sort of. So would would he they take something as big as your geese? No, oh, your ducks, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. We've yes. never had oh. where oh. I lived before we only had peregrine falcons and, and some hawks, but never one as big as this. So this I don't think he could, but we, we just want to make sure. Uh, yeah. it's good yes, not to know, because it's pretty awful when they would take the cat though. Yeah. I don't really think that's so. what the, the cat's she, not going I mean, outside. The, cat, yeah. the cat's that's not going good. outside. They that's could take good. the cat. That's probably why the cat's like, yeah, I'm staying the fuck in. <laughs> no yeah. way. Um, so as I'm sketching this out, notice I'm not putting my eyes in yet. That's going to be one of the last things I do. I want to get the shape of this face right. And one of the things I'm also going to do, oh, I see. OK. That I did. So the halfway point here, I put my nose in the wrong place. I put it right at the halfway point. It's actually a little bit below, or a little bit, yes, below. Um, so I'm laying that out, and that makes more sense. Now my face can be as skinny as it really should be. Before it looked a little bit wide. So if you're looking and going, hmm, my face looks a little too wide. The other thing I'm going to do is find my halfway point. It's about here. Check one, two. Yeah, I'm going to find my halfway point because if I find my halfway point of my last quarter, you can see that if I draw a line across, one, the eyes are above it. Sorry, below it. The eyes are below it. Upside down. So now I can get to this place where I can actually add in my eyes and know that they're kind of in the right place. Don't make them too small. It's going to be tempting to do that. I'm still kind of thinning out the face, which is quite thin. I'm still toying with the shape of the nose. But all the time, I'm not just thinking about the nose or about, right? I'm not just thinking about the nose or about the eyes. I'm thinking about where they are in relation to everything else I can see on the face. And I think once you've really made that transition, things are going to be, when you stop thinking about like just the thing you're drawing and you're also thinking about everything 
else. That's a really significant shift as an artist. You don't end up having the trouble that you have in other, uh, when you're like, okay, how do I, I don't know how to draw this. Like that kind of goes away. Because you're not, all you're thinking about is shape. Um, this takes a while to develop. So don't feel like you have to have it right now, but know that that's kind of the goal. <laughs> it's really to battle your left brain, which wants to dominate the conversation. Like how, how things are supposed to go. There we go. Oops, I think I need a new folder. My folder is now getting a little fluffy. Lots more than it used to. See how I'm correct. It's actually kind of surreal thing to be looking at. Um, yourself drawing on a screen. Want to even get a little bit of this sort of dark. I'm not doing too much, but I'm just kind of indicating where the, the mid tones are in the body. Let's see, kind of lighter over here, over here, it's kind of darker, a little kind of collar for his head. I can tell I need his eyes too big because I'm trying to add in some of the shapes on the top of his forehead and I realize, oops, it's even a little bit more space for that. Um, looks pretty good. I mean, yeah, I'd say, and you know, then we've got this little bit of wing that's sticking off here. And then if you want to, you can lay in this trunk, or you don't have to, right? Here's the I think I, I would just go for a green background. Okay, great. Do it. So you can go ahead and get started painting those darks and those lights. Stick with these simple um, shapes for now. Don't worry about getting too complex on this layer, because there's a lot we can't see which is good actually, because it keeps you simple. It keeps you simplified. So just do the lights and darks as you can see them. Um, don't worry too much. I'm gonna take a picture of this. So I noticed my bat was kind of too fat. Uh, whoops, no, I just, sorry. I just did the same thing. I'm trying to decide what um, color I want to do my Give me one second, you guys. I'm not. Uh, Yeah, Annika, I'd say you're lucky if your cat doesn't want to go out 
it's good for yeah. No, I was feeling worried about him that he wouldn't be happy or anything, but he seemed he seemed fine. He's like, yeah, I don't know. I just think I can stay. In. Is he how old is he now, your cat? <clears throat> That's a good question. He's eight. Eight. Uh, eight. So he's just also at that point where he's starting to maybe slow down a little bit. Yeah. 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 I, I've never let my cat outdoors ever. Mm. Well, it's a good one. If you can, some cats accept it and some don't, right? Like some cats I've really found, like Hermes and Luca started as outdoor cats and they, they have to be outdoor cats because yeah, they're, they're well, aware of what they're missing. If you can raise a cat like uh, you did with your girl, uh, totally indoors, I think it's great. I just think some cats won't accept it. They know. Well, Hermes was born on a farm, you know, like yeah, yeah. next to nettles and like he had brothers and sisters and he could go in and outside his house and he was on a deck and like it's just he's not happy unless he's able to do that all of that uh, yeah I, and I, I don't know Julia's background I mean she was seven months when I right. adopted her from the pound and she was in there with her mother and her brother so she was oh you didn't take a brother no they weren't together I didn't know oh. then no I didn't why did we keep them apart? Um, Maybe uh, they were afraid they might breed already. Yeah, and they were that age. You know, Apparently, they were neutered, weren't they? No, they. She got neutered the same day as I adopted her. Oh, so or because they charge you for it. But I think she seems to have like right. So she's probably like hell. Fuck the outside. Not she she's, you know, she's fine. She'll sit in the window or by the door and looking out, but. If I by mistake leave the door open, she'll still yeah. sit by the door. She yeah. still sits in the door. Wow. Um, you know, Luca, when I adopted Luca, she was one of several strays that was born outside. She lived in an alley in the back of my friend's house. And I remember in Armenia. And I remember that when I walked in, she was the one cat that preferred to be indoors. So I met her because I walked in to visit my friend and there was Muka just sitting on a chair looking adorable, also <laughs> pregnant, I later learned, uh, <laughs> after I adopted her. <laughs> also adorable. probably, and it was snowing outside, right? So her brothers and sisters were totally feral, but Muka was like, I want to be inside. Well, so, particularly she was pregnant, I guess. Right, because she was pregnant. And so... And my friend said, Leah, we can't keep her. You want to keep her? You want to take her with you? And I just looked at her. She looked at me and I was like, yeah. Put her in a pillowcase. I put her in a taxi. <laughs> I took her had to my had, place. Uh, had you had cats before, Leah? Oh, yeah. Many cats. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. I had had many cats before. And she, uh, uh, you know, and then eventually, and so then she had kittens for Okay. Um, and she did not want to be outside. She was not an outdoor cat for, I'd say, two years. She lived with me in an apartment and had her kittens, and then we got rid of her kittens. And then we moved to Croatia, and I lived in this fantastic like neighborhood in Zagreb, a forest in Zagreb. And she was out all the time, running around, killing things. And then we moved to Brooklyn, and she was indoors for Brooklyn. And then we moved to Oregon. And I, I kept her indoors for six months and she was kind of terrified by Oregon, like Oregon scared. Like I remember her flattening on the ground and looking up, like much, everything's so much bigger and wilder. And the noise is here. Yeah, yeah. But she needed to be outside. It definitely was a thing. And she probably adjusted to being inside, but I, I think she really needed it. it and uh, in New York, did she protest being inside? I mean, you have no choice. She in didn't. Work. She didn't. Yeah, it's interesting. She so she kind of does yeah. what the, you know, she'll the do territory. what needs to be done. It's because she's attracted to outside by the sounds of nature, not by the sounds of a city. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Because nature is such a God. She had such a good time in Croatia. No, no one else did in my, in my 
property. Like she killed so many things. <laughs> that was her hunting period. But now she's just old. So she, she kind of quietly, like a little old lady, walks around, walks around the property, then goes and lays down somewhere. You know. They're actually lovely when they're old cats. They sure are. I mean, that's, yeah, it's almost like what you want from the start, almost. Yeah. There's all the naughtiness is gone, and they're just sweet and affectionate. I'm actually just thinking about adopting old cats once. Adopting, we, adopting what? Old cats as I adopt later in life. Um, oh, I see. The problem is sometimes they need care, and so yeah. you have to be willing to. To do that, and you lose yeah. them sooner. But I, I think I agree with you. I like the vibe of an old cat. And the problem is uh, the vet expense, depending. I guess I have to make a lot of money. <laughs> yes, <cats>. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How's everybody doing on these sketches? Is anybody, send your sketches in so I can see them before you start painting. And then I'll start painting too. I'll start painting in a couple minutes, but I want to see everybody's sketches first. It's good to hear, though. Then I think you know he'll probably make up his own mind. Yeah, so I've taken we'll him out on a leash a couple of times just to see, and he's he's very, very cautious. But he can sit with us at the on the veranda and look out. But then after a few minutes, he goes, "You know what? I think I'll go back inside." You know, right. <laughs> I think he's smart and he knows it's scary. He knows it I, is not I, I don't the mind. Of... I mean, you know, it's a good thing. It keeps him safe, and there are a lot of things around here so it's just kind of unexpected I didn't think he'd do that because he's been very much an outdoor cat well you what did you think of a peacock I'm sorry when he was living with a peacock what did you think of him peacock. oh he, he never he, he I mean he would kill gophers and mice Little bird, sadly, but anything else he would. But like the, be I mean, physically, he must have recognized it was a bird, but so enormous compared to him. Yeah, and and Did the ducks too. He ne he never bothered any of them, or he was always kind of cautious, but not. But also, he we got him from the neighbor, so he basically knew that area so well, both the neighbor's place, our place, and the place next door. So he went between all three, but he basically stayed with us all the time that he would venture into his old hunting grounds, and he knew the whole area really well. And here he doesn't know anything, and I guess he's just kind of okay. Well, it's good that he's cautious. Yeah, now he's still here. He's... <laughs> he's participating. He's listening to your cats and <laughs> and your stories, and he's like, yeah, yeah. He, he is much cuddlier now than he's ever been. Yeah, he's Watch. wanting to assure. I think that's. I think that's good. I think he's being a smart cat. Yeah. Really, I'm going to send it to you. Okay, good. Oh wow! Hi, very better. nice. Coming along. All right. So now. Thank you. You Not can, everybody else, let's see. Monica looking good. Um, he's more lined up here. Well, that's not quite true. Actually, he looks okay. The ears look good. So the only thing I'd say, Annika, and yeah. you know what, I have to fix this too. As I'm looking at yours, I can really see it. Um, the leg, huh? There, the leg is really kind of at an angle, which which is why these things yeah. are at the angle that they are, right? I see, I see. See it? So I was just looking at yours and thinking, uh oh, I gotta fix mine. Just to zip that out, right? Yeah, exactly. you're right. So, Sandra, watch out that you narrow his face. Oh, right? uh, yes. Uh, it's because. He has his ear like is a, a little bit narrow. His ear is a little bit like narrow. A, a glow, a glow around his. Yes. You know, like yes, a little like glow some of the light. Glow. Yeah. So fur make glow. sure you get that inner face, you know, okay. like narrow enough. 
Um, and I only say this because I did the same thing. I think your ears are not big enough. Okay. I think they need to be a little wider. And they got too, too, too wide. Two, oh, yes, one needs to be. It looks pretty good to me. Thank you. I measured it. Yeah, I can see. I can see you did. And and the the war the warning I'm giving you about the face is as you can see by my face here. See how much I had to uh, pull it in. Right. So I'm doing this little like here's the inner face, and then the outer face. Right, is this lighter part? That's you might have noticed. I'm doing him upside down because he looks the right way up. <laughs> And you didn't hear me singing at the beginning. Upside down, you turned. <laughs> Sandra, you turned him upside down, so he's right side up. Yeah. Is that what you're doing? That's yes. what she did. All right. Without even thinking about it, I've been drawing. So my... I think everybody is at this point. Does anybody else need to see this piece? Well, you've got it on the WhatsApp thread. Let's pull him out so we can see. I kind of like this because I was like, oh, they'll be forced to, to work with him upside down. Um, of course, Sandra is going to like flip it up because she wants to flip it up, and that's totally okay. Um, uh, you're so funny, Sandra. <laughs> I figured because I would pay more attention to the face if it was at the top, uh -huh. and that's what matters most to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why. All right, so now we've got this piece. And um, yeah, what? You decided on green. I know why, Annika, because or Ani, because he's he green. wanted to do, because he's red, because because this guy is red and so yep. your greens yep. are looking good. So I'm thinking myself, I keep seeing, gosh, what? What else are people thinking about painting? What else are you thinking about painting? Could be blue. It it could could be blue for sure. Project. I was thinking about that. Um, okay, what if we did something crazy like turquoise? I'm a little curious. It's kind of, I don't know if it's dark enough, but I'm willing to take the hit for this. All right, you guys, I'm gonna do something I've not really done before, which is this cobalt teal. Really? You use that all the time? Uh, not as a, I don't use it as a base. I use it all the time in my top oh, in layers. background, I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, here, I'm going to try it as a base. Why the heck not? Let's see how it looks. So I say that saying, I don't know what's going to happen. All right, as usual, I'm picking a fairly big, um, because my particular painting is smaller. Well, here we go. Here's a fairly big brush. I'm dipping it in the water. I'm starting with my darker layers. There's probably going to be some dripping. It's my darkest parts. If anybody needs to look, if you're confused by the color, look at the black and white to get your darks and your lights. But you're going to see there's a lot of mid-tones in this. Yeah, I, I like it. I'm going in. So I'm basically doing my darks and my mid-tones kind of a similar value. And the rest I'm just going to water down to kind of a light wash. I might take a paper towel and pull off just a tiny bit, right, to show I still want paint there. But I want my light values and my dark values to show and my dark values to show up. So I'm doing that here. But mostly, yeah. And then the background, I'll do the same. 
But I like what I like the thinking that Ani did there by adding her uh, by switching up, basically making the background red. It's interesting. You can see how how simple your painting can be. These base layers, as long as you're not focusing so much on lights and darks. I'm kind of also doing different brush strokes. I'm doing these horizontal brush strokes for the uh, for the branches, and I'm kind of swirling for the leaves. So I'm even at this stage, I'm kind of letting my mark making a little bit influence. Do you, do you know what I mean by that? Are you guys picking up what I'm laying down there? I'm letting my mark making on you know, my base layers kind of reflect a little bit of where, where I want it, where I want to go on the upper levels. So see the difference between like this line here and that this lines these strong kind of vertical-ish lines, sorry, horizontal-ish lines. And then this kind of floofy circular brush strokes for the background. Still kind of paying attention to light and dark. So these things start to happen and you'll find you'll be doing them naturally as you become, is anybody finding that? that there's certain brush strokes that, you know, they're thinking more as you're laying it down about what I want to convey on the top layers. So it's an interesting idea. All right, now I'm gonna need to let it dry. Um, what's everybody else picking? Blue. Blue, nice. There's my guy. Sorry. Send it over. Know decided she needed to go out. Of course. Oh, of course she did. Yeah. So Diana, I hope you'll let me copy edit your next program too. Yes. I'll yes. Be your copy. I'll be your copy editor. I just find it fascinating. Thank you. Also, I didn't have to do the tedious stuff like no, the, all it. the listings. I just had to do the stories, yeah. um, which is the interesting part. Yeah, no, it's totally interesting. Thank you. Yeah, I'm still thinking about all those people. Yeah, I next week I'm gonna start going after honorees. Excellent. Heard back from Joni Mitchell's people? Yeah, I'm gonna try that. Yay. I'm gonna try that. You know, I read this really fascinating article in the Atlantic about Boris Johnson, right? Um, they they were comparing him, so they were comparing him to like a predecessor who also was forced to resign because he was just so wildly unpopular and really selfish. I tried to remember the guy's name. Let me see if I can find it here. He said, and the what the what the interviewer or the writer said. Find it. Was that the difference between these two people who were kind of jerks when they resigned? Is that the pre the, the earlier one? Here we go. Yes, it's called the shameless Boris Johnson. Ah, his name is John Profumo. In 1963, Jack Profumo was the UK Secretary of State for War. He was a married man who had an affair. 
uh, with a call girl. He was a jerk. Oh, he was he just was a jerk. Part of that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Profumo resigned in disgrace. Like, yeah, yeah. Like I, him. But he said, but that's not why I'm thinking about him. I'm thinking about what Profumo did next. After he left government, made a choice. Um, he left the public eye, repaired his marriage, and spent the rest of his days doing charitable work for the poor. Wow. Yeah. 12 years after his resignation, he was invited to Buckingham Palace and honored by the queen for his charity work. He continued to live a quiet life and died in 2006. So he took that moment and transformed it into something really incredible. And he, they're like, basically, Boris will never, because that guy is just such a jerk, will never, ever do anything like that. I was fascinated by that. I did not know that about Profumo, that he actually was like, um, I wish we could say the same with Nixon. <laughs> like somebody like tried to do something good, you know, like after after he took that moment of total fail, epic fail. I suppose somebody like Will Smith is in that same position, right? You know, you take this moment of epic fail and then you're like, okay, how do I how do I turn this around? How did I let this get so wrong? Um, but you he said he can't imagine Boris Johnson doing that. But you never know. You never know. You never know. You never know. Hey, we live in the area where selfishism is king. Yeah. It's like actually. Uh, yeah. For Will Smith, it will be hard. Yeah, but he could. He could do, like I mean what what ha, what he'd have to do is do the opposite of what he's always done, which is Will Smith was with Will Smith, right? So what is the opposite of that? That's like um, taking I don't know. Yeah, when maybe when his marriage fails. That's right. <laughs> yeah, maybe when his marriage fails. Yes, if it will. Oh. But Paul was really helpful with the award show. He said that. What did he helped you out? Yeah. He, he felt very committed to helping you. He talked about it. Yeah, he was um, he was helping with, you know, transporting stuff. And yeah, he was really good. Oh, that's so great. And running think... errands, you know, doing like time consuming. Yeah. Heavy, Thing, all that he uh he was very moved by the awards i could tell you that he was oh. very very moved by them he enjoyed uh he, enjoyed, he talked to me about it for quite a bit before you came on on tuesday he was very excited by that oh, hi good. sweetie are you gonna do some printmaking with us on sunday yeah hi Hi. Uh -huh. Hey, let's pop you up so everybody can see you. Here. Hi, you're getting so big. You're getting to be such a grown-up boy. Oh, he's five already, so. I know, it's kind <laughs> of shocking. Um, are you going to do art with us on Sunday? We don't know yet, honestly, saying, because uh, we, we had some uh, plans things. with friends. That's for... mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll see. We'll I can't... see. I have a feeling this is going to be great, great for kids as well as us. So, Emma, did I see Oscar in there with you? Yeah, he was here, but he was in kind of restless mood, so he's gone out to play I basketball. <laughs> they just finished school yesterday, so well, no, the day before. Him. So. Uh, they're on holiday and yeah. Every 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 And just we are debating what what animal is the is the Mateo remembers. Sorry, remembers it from cartoon. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> I'm still waiting for mine to dry a little bit. If you want to, you can take a. a and remember, we're, if we want to, we can take two sessions with this. If we don't get it done, we can take two sessions with it. We don't have to, but if we want to, we can. Honestly, I don't think I'm going to be done with one session. <laughs> <laughs> I like taking two sessions to do something. And then you have all these other paintings. If you finish this, yeah. you can work on something else. I know. I'm not, I'm... We try to rush in the night don't do it as well right yeah so i'm really big on not rushing this we have you know i feel very confident we've got a we've had a lot of support from reuters we have a lot of time right we have our support like our kind of base support so why how rush is, the process how is nbc coming along you know slowly but surely i just did my first class with them they loved it now i'm trying to get them to i'm not get, i want to add a beginning drawing class but i just don't know when to do it you know so i'm trying to figure that out and it's just slow i'm hoping they'll be onboarded by the fall uh that's my goal they were all like we're gonna do this by summer and i'm like uh-huh <laughs> no <laughs> it takes longer but my first class with them went really well. And I've been doing a lot of work. Uh, I've been doing a lot of teaching with um, the Pointer Institute. Do you guys know them? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So they, their fellowship program, I, they now open and close all their sessions with a drawing class from me. Um, oh, they, how cool. Often after the most stressful session. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Let me in after the most stressful session. And... Um, and what are they, Leah? Uh, they're a journalism training organization. So oh, they really yeah. focus oh, on taking kind of mid-career journalists and giving them this. It's a, it's amazing, actually, because if you they're do really, like- They're really good. They're great. Like they, they work with you in your job, right? So you don't have to quit your job. I think they give you what a master's in journalism might be, but they do it in a way that you don't have to quit your job. Right, so they offer classes. So all their stuff is online right now, um, uh, and they often just do it for the stress relief, right? Like that's why they're doing it. And this particular group, I taught one of those classes last week too. And this particular group, they were very young; were all in their early twenties, and they all were really emotional in their like respond like you know that little drawing exercise I do where there's a little box and you have to repeat what's in it and it's a, a guy a Picasso guy right so I asked them afterwards oh, so what was the hardest thing about that and one woman said I've just never heard before she said I was so worried I wouldn't get it right and everybody would laugh at me or something <laughs> Like, oh my God, no, no, oh no. Like I've never, you know, normally people are like, well, it was hard because I couldn't figure out where to put this or that, but she wasn't talking about that. These guys were very emotional. Um, so I guess this is what she's been thinking of art all along and why she doesn't do it. Exactly. I'm glad they say it. It's just no one's ever said that in that context. It always comes out, right? Um, um, but like, I, it always comes out, but usually later, usually in that first session, it's kind of more about the mechanics, like, oh, what are the actual mechanics? But these guys, they were really um, emotionally, it was emotional in a lot of ways. I can't remember, but that was the thing that stuck with me. And she said that, and I was like, wow, no one's ever said that to me at this point, you know, in the exercises. So yeah, I was able to say, hey, listen, <laughs> I totally feel you and don't worry. Making mistakes is a constant process. It's not that you stop making mistakes, it's that you start recognizing that you have to make the mistake to get to where you're going. Um, my beast is flying, and I think that uh, what you're, you're saying is very uh, is, It was very brave, I think, of this lady. Yeah, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's looking good. Your beast is looking great. Get in some Thank background. You. This is the moment to get in the background and 
then we'll then start working more details. layers <laughs> and then we're going to work more details and get a little bit more of that bird texture in and some of the lighters in but this is a great yeah i did think it was really brave of her to say so i guess the truth is this particular group of pointer fellows they're young and they're like they're not afraid this particular group just wasn't afraid to say emotionally and then it was really cute like after the class was over they were like, I feel like I could do anything. <laughs> they were like, yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> from uh, from I, can, I, uh, I was afraid that someone will laugh at me to I can do everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean by they were just young and very emotional. <laughs> <laughs> they were adorable. I guess you can sometimes get that feeling if you finally manage to do something you thought you never yep. could. You know, Definitely. Sandra, this is the one reason I teach these classes because I want people to have that feeling. I want, I really want them to get this is something. I want you all to get this is something you could do, which of course you all know because you've been doing it. Now you're just upping, now I'm just helping you up the ante. But that, I told her, please put me in front of as many people as possible because. I think everybody should have this feeling. Uh, this I think my newbie, my newbies today had this feeling when they were, just basically went like a storm through the press release of, uh, of one of the components that they were snapping. Yes. Basically, and I, I've seen, because I, I have not eight people. And so it means two snapping groups and uh, the group, the first group did a press release under three minutes and they were so proud of themselves. Ah. The second day they're <laughs> snapping and I was so proud of it. Was like, yeah, three minutes yes. for everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, was it in English or what language was it in? Uh, it was in English. It was in English. But, you know, the, that's the basically second day that, that they're actually getting to know the fast wire and all the tools that we that, that we are right. using for, for, right. for covering the companies. So, uh, it's in a, in a very morning, it was still kind of confusing. They couldn't uh, distinguish between in the front uh, different approaches and uh, just you know three hours later they just basically felt like kings of oh, the world right. <laughs> yeah they felt really excited right that's like um it's there's an instagram person named grace and amy it's a single mom and her daughter her four-year-old daughter and her cats and so her four, so she does little videos where sometimes she's it videoing her daughter who says the most incredible things, but mostly she puts her daughter's voice on, over her cat Penny. <laughs> so like, conversations, right? Like, and the cat like opens its mouth and it has a little kid's voice, like, hi, that's dumb. You know, like whatever it is that they said. Anyway, she took a picture, she caught her daughter um, trying, who's like four. Uh, playing on a new toy and there was this moment where she and so she was holding on to bars and she had her feet on a roller which was rolling underneath her her feet went off the ground and her face just went whoa oh my god like and she captured the look on her daughter's face froze it and said the look on your face when you try something new and then immediately afterwards she figured out how to make her legs roll on the roller and she was having so much fun it was just like a second like a flip second, but I thought, oh yeah, that's it. That's totally it. Um, I'm obsessed with this person. I watch everything she posts, it's so entertaining. <laughs> now I think I'm gonna try and find it for you. <laughs> but you know, um, honey, this, uh, I got this, um, mm -hmm. this two classroom situations, they really help. I remember as a young yeah. journalist, we did like a scenario and it was like an IMF meeting or something. And then later on, as a young journalist on my foreign posting, I had to cover something like that, a Latin American data meeting. Right. And I was scared when I thought, oh, I've done this, you know, I've done yeah. this before and it was okay. And it gave me right. so much confidence that yes. I had, I had done even had in the classroom. Yeah. I had done something similar. Right. Um, yeah. All right. Are you guys ready? Here it is. I'm going to show it to you. <laughs> okay. Here it is. Oh, I love your guy, Annick. I love the color. Thank you. Okay. 
she caught that expression and then she just started like <laughs> oh god <laughs> it looks more scared when anything. <laughs> it's just one second when you try something new and didn't know what to expect <laughs> <laughs> But mostly she does things like this, like, um, she'll show her daughter actually talking because her daughter is just a stitch but most of the time she puts her daughter's voice over the cat <laughs> i normally don't like her cats who have human voices but i like this one <laughs> so she's this woman is very deep she's absolutely the right she's very thoughtful and anyway i love her she's like really <laughs> they're all funny they're all really really funny um Send the link, please. Leave. Oh yeah, I'll send it. It's an Instagram account. Here, wait, and there's one more. That's really here. Just one more. Where's the one where she's clicking on here? Okay, family meeting. Here. Here's the daughter. Here. Really? Oh wait. Oh. The kid is a good actress. Yeah. Aww. She's showing him doing it. Anyway, they're hilarious. I'll send it over. Um, it's amazing. There's some, something super, super cute for the to me at least in in kids speaking English, like you know native speaking, is because because especially small ones, there there there's something about the vowels and some certain sounds that they pronounce in such a way that I'm just like, oh, it is. It's really oh, cute. Totally. This one, though, she says these really incredible things, and there was one in particular where I was like, all right, this is. Anyway, it's quite entertaining. Uh, let's see. It's Amy19. Is I'll put this in the chat. You can just find her on Instagram. Amy, it's Amy and Gracie. <laughs> Amy 19. Really fun. Hey, uh, if you ever want to, um, uh, Anik, we can totally add a little drawing lesson into your trainees' days. Oof, I'm, oh, I'm always doing the try the for every every single single. Oh, do you the, teach them a drawing lesson? Not a drawing lesson per se, but we're doing the drawing exercise when we have the session about the communication online and the 
It's basically uh, exercise. I'm Excellent. thinking that Emma, Emma mentioned it once to you. Excellent. Uh, so, 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 some oh, time ago. yeah, you're right. You're right. Absolutely. Well, so everyone, you... everyone in Gdańsk goes through that uh, with me. <laughs> so, and uh, they usually like it because it's com something completely different after explaining, you know, uh, how the financial markets work and stuff like that. Uh, Jesus, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> so um, well, you let me know if you want any support on that. I'm happy to oh, support definitely. that. Definitely. I was actually in, actually was wondering about the the exercise that you were mentioning that you did with the with this Picasso thing. Yeah, I can show so, you. I, I think we've done it. Oh, we Haven't did we it. Done we've it? done it many times. I don't, well, I don't several remember. Times. It's the guy upside down. The guy upside down, and there's a little. Were well, you just doing a piece of a chair and the leaves in the sleeve? Um, I will find it for you and send I'm, you the materials. Oh, you somehow missed this you. one, huh? Yeah, I may have missed this one, or I'm just basic. My brain is is not really working the best today. I woke up at three in the morning, and then I was leading a training for six hours. So I got it. So you just got it. So your brain is fried. Um. Yeah. I'll. Uh. I'll. I'll. Uh. What I should do is record it, so you could just have it as a recording to look at. Um. So maybe I'll do a quick recording and send you a YouTube link. How does that work? That works. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's what I use if I only have five minutes. It's what I'll often use when I have complete beginners just to uh, introduce the concepts of drawing, right? But it also is, okay, this is what I'm doing when I don't, um, this is what I'm doing when I don't, uh, when I, when I, only have a few minutes and it's very captivating assignment it will often catch people in a moment uh, and show them the way of thinking in right brain it'll show them right brain thinking uh, it'll show them how much when they are trying to approach something from the left brain how much information they're missing sometimes so it's really it's a nice quick way uh, to do it. Uh, I'll send it. Yeah, I'll, I'll record it, send it over. And uh, for any of you who need this for training, you can totally use it. And I'll email and I'll text the material. To Thank well, you. So you Thank you it. very much. Yeah. So I, I need some refreshment because I think as I'm approaching the moment when I will get totally burned out. And I need to say something just, uh, just to, you know, to keep me myself going. <laughs> so, yeah. Have you heard about the other job? No, not it. Nothing. It'll take forever to make up your mind. Yeah, sure I, mean, do. I, I don't. I don't have any big, uh, uh, you know, uh, hopes about it. It's just basically I did it to just. Uh, raise my hand and say hi i'm here <laughs> if you, you know the good thing about applying for a job is that it it kind of uh, forces you to sell yourself mm -hmm. to kind yeah. of you know write a resume or you know you're like like and sometimes you you get in play a bit like a company you know that suddenly gets in play and might be bought by another one you sort of showcase yourself and then the managers you've showcased yourself to usually your manager and people above kind of then keep you in mind for other things even if you don't get it yeah um, that's, so it's that's always the, a good exercise i mean that, that, that's that's one of the things uh the reasons i did it and also you know i feel like um over the last year, I trained almost 30 people just as an as a induction. This year, I'm also approaching already this number. And uh, man, compared with Bangalore, it's not, nothing. Yeah, but <laughs> but still, for me, doing it all the all the time, almost alone, it's just uh, getting a bit boring. So <laughs> I just needed <laughs> something different. <laughs> I mean, I love training, and uh, don't get me wrong. It's basically something that I could do all, all my life. But uh, uh, <laughs> if I don't have even time to introduce some, something new, even new, ex uh, you know, examples, and for the tenth time, we are snapping Spotify results. But why <laughs> don't you get... create stuff? I mean, a lot of trainers create stuff. I create all the time the stuff. Just uh, I, I just finished uh, on. Uh, 
what was that june 28th with the train the trainer that i just wrote from wrote as a, as a session from scratch i had two days to check the writing drills and from monday i started the new session so oh. no, even no no catching breath for uh, mm. for anything yeah? and it's uh, and it's just been like this for the last six months uh so i'm kind of tired i bet you can imagine plus having your little boy at home Right. Oh, well, not to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> well, because, you know, well, you he's easy. For your own. Sorry, I'm yeah, tired. sure, especially when he's getting sick exactly the day when I have to go back to office. <laughs> he got COVID <laughs> or just sick sick? No, no, it's just basically regular some cold, sick. some regular colds and stuff like this. It's like he's basically like a radar. Mama is going to the office, I'm going to get sick. <laughs> <laughs> so the daddy has it harder. <laughs> All right, I am pulling out some colors for my top layers. Uh, tell me if I'm missing anything, Ani, since you're already here. Um, I, I'm going to put out ultramarine blue. Um, I'm going to put out ultramarine blue. I've got burnt sienna. I have white. I have yellow ochre. Uh, I'm into the little burnt umber. Oh, there they all are. My ultra brain blue and my burnt umber are stuck together because they, they work together all the time. Um, there's ultra brain blue. There's a little burnt umber. I think this is a good base. Am I missing anything, Ani? Is there anything else I should have here? And yellow. Yeah. Uh, I I added the yellow, the cadmium yellow, because I want to have this glow from uh, from the bottom. Yep. Yep. Like from the from the from the lower. Uh, yep. Okay. Layer. So I've added a little bit there. So here we go. So now I'm going to be working in a with a slightly smaller brush, not super small, but small enough if you compare it to my first one, where I don't, where I'm like, I don't care how big it is. And now you have a version with it. With it back. Right? So here's my first brush, the one with the blue on it. And here's my second brush. So I'm going smaller as I want to get more detail. Let's see. Oh, yeah, girl, it's coming along. Very nice. So Good. now you might want to. Um, uh, so I've got this fan, which I've cut, right? Mm -hmm. You might want to mix, I'm just playing here, let's see. You might want to mix a little bit of burnt sienna, white, and yellow ochre, right? To create, yeah. using a fan to create some of this, we're mm -hmm. really focusing, here I want it to be wider. The fluff. Right, where the light hits the medium, right? Yeah. I'm obviously doing it too early in the process. But that's where you really, where that fur, you're not trying to draw every fur, right? But you know that this, see how this is, yes, I'm much less hard on the fan brush than I used to be. Um, because I can see it, also notice I cut it up so it's not so freaking round and fanny, I don't know. Um, what I'm doing is mixing burnt umber, Burnt sienna and a little bit of blue, ultramarine blue for my darks here. Oh, I don't want to be using the fan for this. I definitely want to be using a flat. So the fan is going to be creating fur texture, but that's not what I want. What you want is something more like what Anika's got on her first layers, right? You want a little bit of, you want your dark skin laid more block like, and then you're going to brush with smaller brushes. Oh, look at his little ear. Oh my fuck that. Look at little, look at his little ear. Thank goodness I have like kind of I've shuttled all the 11, 12, and 13 year olds into their own class this summer. So you won't <laughs> be there hearing me cursing and all of this. I'm going to leave you guys, but uh, Diana, if you yeah. see that, that thing on Home Depot, please send me your uh, photo. The gutter? Yes, please. Yeah. 
How oh, kept me up last night. Thank you. <laughs> I got a quote and this. Yeah, I sent you where I'm at. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, it's looking see? great, Diana. It's looking great, great, great. I mean, I don't know who this person is, so I don't know. Oh, what it's definitely it looking like, like a, a Scandinavian Good. now. Yeah, mm -hmm. it looks very Scandinavian. I agree. She's actually agree. Scottish. Oh, all right. <laughs> fine, fine. Good one. <laughs> Don't tell us you Scandinavian people hang out together. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, Scot a Nordic person. A, a Northern Nord person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Northern person. He's a Scottish person with a Scottish name. <laughs> that's lovely. Our last name is Stuart. Oh, yes, that's very Scottish. <laughs> When mm. I was in, when I'm in Scotland and in Ireland, everybody thinks I'm from there, particularly Ireland. And I don't think there's any Irish in me, but I'll, we'll pick up somebody on the road. They'll be like, yeah, you're an Irish just because of my freckles. They're like, yeah, the McGonagall girl <laughs> down the road. I'm like, I am not the McGonagall girl down the road. I'm just a tourist and I'm giving you a ride. No, you're the McGonagall girl down the road. <laughs> I see you tomorrow. Bye, Diana. See Bye. you at 8, 8, 8 a.m. tomorrow. Okay. Bye. -bye. Ciao. Monica, did you go to this uh, press bubble board show? We can't hear you, my dear. I didn't. I had to go to Denver on uh, on hockey. Ah. So, I missed busy. It. so that was too bad. I was going to do the interviews like I used to do, and I really liked that, but yeah. I didn't get to do it. Well, next time, there's one in December because Diana's yeah. for punishment. <laughs> no, it's always the events are always really good, but I just I couldn't make it. So what are we doing I, tomorrow? Uh, I haven't decided yet. It's going to be something ink related, it'll be an animal of some kind. If you have any suggestions. Oh, no, I thought I might uh, continue with this part. So. You can, you totally can. You totally can. Uh, it'll be something different for, um, so you guys can see I'm still just like kind of loosely laying in the oh, colors. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really getting into too much detail yet. Um, I'm still drawing it, Leo, I sent it to you. Okay. Yeah, you can totally work on it tomorrow. But you can also, oh yeah, he looks good. He looks good. Um, I want to make sure his little nose, I'm just double checking the nose. One, two, three. Perfect, Sandra. I'm going to check the wig now. Yeah, you're in good shape. You're in good shape. Thank you. So I should probably paint, but we've only got 15 minutes. We do? Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah, do get as far as you can. We will do this next week. So if you want to just do tomorrow's assignment, you can bring this in tomorrow to class, but we're going to work on this next week as well. Um, so you can see here, I'm kind of getting in some of the lights. There's a little bit of wing that goes behind his leg here. It's a little hard to see because it's kind of, so you don't want to spend too much detail on it, but it's definitely here. Uh, let me outline it so you guys can see it. It's here. It's like here. Right, so the leg is kind of like here. And then that's the outline. I'll put I'll put close up, send it over so that you have it to look at. Here you go. So that's the shaping that's happening there. But you'll notice, even at this stage, and I'm probably not going to get much farther, then very everything's still blocky. This is not. Everything's way blocky. Um, I'm not going to add details in until I, my goal will be to get this in and get in a little bit of background. It's 
just the speaking fetus. It looks like Nancy and Marcy are back from their uh, French vacation, Sandra. I can't wait to hear what they have to say. She said they had a great time. And she said they did some of the things that Claudia suggested and probably you suggested. <laughs> they took like what the students told them to do. So I'm, I'm working with a small brush, but not the smallest. I'm just literally, like I said, still blocking in. And so. Kind of leaning on the darts more. Everything will be kind of elucidated on this next layer. And here's where I stop. You can see it's kind of like maybe I want a little bit here of light or just a little bit, not that much. No, just enough to kind of chill. And now I'm going to work on the background, which should be kind of greenish. I'm going to go back to my big brush, I'm going to mix blue and yellow, just make it kind of green. Yellow. Yeah. I never really like what ultramarine blue and yellow mix for green. So let me start with the green. I'm starting with a shallow green. I like how my base is supporting everything. So there's shallow green. Here's more yellow. Ah, uh, yeah, that's better. And then I'm going to add a little bit of red to it. Always my yellows get a little bit of red. So when I add in, and then right now I'm just kind of trying to get basic coloring. So I'm not, I'm going to go back to my original. So red, yellow, yellow green makes this nice, rich, dark. I'm also kind of laying it out. I like this particular Slide. brush because it's got a rounded tip. So I'm raining it out. You can put it away. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm kind of working around the branches, which are going to have a sort of brown blue treatment. Um, there is a lighter area, so I might try to lay this in in yellow and white now. You see how I'm doing that right on top of my green? Not like super detailed, but just kind of sketching it in with paint. So this is still, it's interesting. This is still what I would consider the sort of sketchily phase of painting. Right, I'm still just kind of blocking things out. I'm not getting too detailed. That's a tricky, if you can get yourself there and here's like tree branches. So now I've got like brown, blue, brown and blue to make a kind of muted brown. Dark here, kind of lighter here. I'm gonna use red and yellow for my lighter part of my tree trunk here. A little bit more. It's still all just like kind of placing the objects rather than getting caught up in details. If we worry about these details too soon, they can kind of freeze us, right, from finishing. So, I, what I really love about painting, it very much works with my own process, is that I 
I don't try to get too detailed too soon. I really love this feeling that I have the freedom to kind of brush in my first couple layers before I get too detailed and te you know into those sometimes tedious details. What I find is that often I don't have to do as much. If I do it later in the process, I don't have to do as much as I think. So that's really the advantage of that, like that we need. And also, if you're wanting to simplify, if you're wanting to create an impressionist like atmosphere, which I think most of us think is what, you know, think of art in that way, this is the way to do it. So see how loose and kind of scruffy everything still is. This is where I'm going to stop. It's definitely a block in. It's definitely not finished, but it's got all the light and dark pieces in place so that I can start to add detail later. And what you'll find is, and we'll work with a little tiny brush, we'll work with this, right? And what you'll find is that um, going in, and particularly after a week when we haven't really thought about it very much, it's going to come out really beautifully. I, I love this actually exactly where it is right now. Sometimes you can hit it so perfectly on the on the underpainting that you don't really need to do fit, you know, do much finishing work. I like it. All right. Why don't you guys, so you guys work another five minutes and then send me where you're at. We'll take a look and then we'll continue on next week because we got we are no rush. No rush at all. This is our time to slow down, breathe, shake off the day, shake off the week, shake off the millennium, <laughs> like living in, right? Sandra, you are um, muted. So we can't hear you. I can see your, your lips moving. But this is the moment, as you all know, because this is why you're here. This is where we stop to take a breath. And if you need to sleep in, sleep in. <laughs> Please sleep in. You can catch up later. Sleeping is very important. <laughs> As I am learning late in my life. Later in my life. Oh, wait. Oh, we got this on this. Okay. Um, uh, looking while you guys are working, I'm looking to see if they've got a good subject. I was kind of thinking that dog that we did the other day would be a good subject, maybe better since people have drawn it once. Let me show you what I'm thinking. Did you see
Okay, just two more minutes. Okay, I've just sent where the um, flying fox at? is. Where the flying fox is at. Excellent. All right, so he's starting to come. This is perfect. So this is a perfect place to stop. Very nice, Emma. Excellent. Yeah, you guys. Thank this you. Um, let's take a look. I do want to take a look at, I'm going to pull off the spotlight and have everybody show what you're working on. Don't worry, we have another session to work on this. And uh, maybe we'll also do a beginning exercise next week too, so you can see this great drawing exercise. But let's, bye, sweetie. Let's uh, hold them up where they're at. Nice. Yeah, these are, I just kind of love seeing them. Sandra, you can you show it up? Oh, she's got her phone on. I see she's looking. Anyway, Sandra, Sandra. <laughs> Never mind, we'll catch her next week. All right, I hope I see some of you guys tomorrow. I hope I see you, some of you on Sunday. Uh, if not, I'll see you next Thursday, next Friday. Um, but try and join us for the week. Sandra, can you hold up your piece so we can see it before we go? Yeah, hold it up. Oh. Or just send it across the thread when you're ready. Okay. All right. Bye, guys. We'll see Have you soon. Weekend. Ciao, Bye. you too. <laughs>